Just ahead on American Black Journal, we're celebrating a major piece of Detroit's African American history, Paradise Valley. We'll talk about the Detroit Paradise Valley Music Festival with event producer Johnny Washington, and we'll have performances from two Detroiters appearing at this year's event, Kimmy Horn and Dwayne Parham. Plus, we'll give you a sneak peek of a documentary about the rebirth of Paradise Valley. Stay tuned for a very entertaining half hour coming up next. Lindsay wants to know. So I'm curious, what's DT Energy doing to improve their customer service? Why don't we take a ride over there and let Rachel tell us. Hello. Hello. Take a walk with me. Here at DT Energy, we're working very hard to improve our service, like answering every call under one minute and resolving the issue on the first call. Wow, no passing the buck, huh? Nope. And plus, we're adding over 100 customer service jobs right here in the state of Michigan. I need to get a real job. I'm going to send your application. Oh, thanks, Rachel. DTE Energy. Know your own power. Welcome to American Black Journal, I'm Stephen Henderson. Paradise Valley was an area in Detroit where much of the city's black population lived, worked, and played from the 1920s through the 1950s. It was a thriving district where African Americans opened businesses and legendary black entertainers performed in crowded clubs. Next weekend, Detroit will celebrate the area's legacy with the second annual Detroit Paradise Valley Music Festival. Joining me now is the event's producer, Johnny Washington, along with two of the entertainers for this year's festival, Kimmy Horn and Dwayne Parham. Welcome to American Black Thank Journal. You for Very us. glad Thank you guys are Thank here. Good to be having. here. So, so uh, a lot of people, I think, don't really understand what Paradise Valley was. I mean, I, a lot of people know about Black Bottom, mm -hmm. which was uh, the neighborhood uh, where most African Americans uh, lived in the city for a very long time. But Paradise Valley was was uh, you know right next to that to that area yes. and was this very vibrant uh, economic and cultural uh, community. Yes, you almost could look at it as saying Paradise Valley was Black Bottom's downtown. Right, <laughs> right. You, you know right. what I'm saying? Where all the nightclubs and the, the fine dining, the pharmacies, you know, it was full of those 66 blocks had over 350 African American businesses, uh, you know, within that area. So you can just imagine the, uh, the energy and right. the. Um, the things that would just take place on a daily basis. It was exciting, right, exciting time. Right, and and uh, you know, you say downtown. That's a great way to to, to put it. Downtown is where you find mm -hmm. entertainment. Yes. Uh, and that's what this festival is right. really about. You know, we, we, during the era, the Duke Ellingtons, the Sarah Bonds, the Lena Horns, mm -hmm. all the greats of that era, when they came to Detroit. They performed in Paradise Valley. Yeah. You know, we had our the, a five-star hotel, the Gotham Hotel. So the the music festival that takes place July 19th through the 21st at Hart Plaza on the beautiful riverfront is celebrating that wonderful history, and we're also celebrating the rebirth of Paradise of Valley, Paradise Valley and right. the memory of it. You right. know, uh, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful history. Right. So, Kimmy, you are one of the performers. Uh, yes. Tell me about uh, what you're what you're doing at the festival and what it means. Well, I am going to be doing a um, wonderful tribute to um, legendary jazz singers and um, most of the singers that did come through, as Johnny just mentioned, to, through the Gotham Hotel, through a lot of the clubs th throughout, the, um, throughout the district. Right. Um, I'll do a tribute to um, not only Lena Horne, my great aunt, but also to Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn, right. and of course, Billie Holiday. Right. So I am going to feature some of that kind of music along with um, some contemporary jazz as well. Yeah, so uh, you know, singing those standards—that's the kind of music that uh, I grew up listening to in my dad's house. My dad had jazz playing yes. all the time uh, in his in his house. Uh, is there much of a demand for that now, though? I mean, I listen to it. That's what I buy on iTunes. But I feel like not mm -hmm. most people are not doing that anymore. Well, I believe it is. I mean, I think it. Um, I know the jazz is really growing. I mean, the standards are something that a lot of the young adults are getting into now. I mean, I've gone out and seen different shows where now the younger adults and they're teaching them in schools to where they're really um, setting up a new, improved, not improved, but just, um, as you mentioned, rebirth. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. a platform yeah. that jazz is still very much alive. Right. And that is what I'm indicating, you know, in the show with the tributes. And it's like a roller coaster ride right. that I'll take you on from the jazz standards and again through to the contemporary popular jazz songs of yeah. the day. 
Dwayne, you're also you're also performing. Yeah, I, I most definitely. Uh, I'm just so honored to be a part of the Detroit uh, Paradise Valley, and with Mr. Uh, Washington, I am honored to be. Mm -hmm. And whenever I play, I I play for all of my. Um, mentors like all the great horn players from uh, Motown uh -huh. and uh, the unsung musicians from the Motown Empire and we not only play the uh, the jazz but we we play the funk we just r and <laughs> we just make music <laughs> right yeah. it's right. all one color and we just do it and just have a good yeah. time right. you know uh, you, you mentioned Motown most people uh, think of uh, Detroit when they hear the word Motown uh, you know that's sure. the music that uh, that at least in the 60s came out here, but there's a lot richer musical history of yes. this city and well, that I think people don't know as much about. When you think of all the great um, horn players and musicians from Motown, they played jazz and then at nighttime, then they played R&B and, right. and Motown, they just played music. So right. this is the kind of thing uh, I would say Mr. Washington has put together for yes. these three big days, July uh, 19th, 20th and the 21st. Right. It's just a, a, a mecca of music. Mm with the Daz Band, yeah. with uh, yes. Kimmy Horn, myself, you got um, yeah. uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Laws, Laws. and uh, all uh, these yes. great artists, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm just honored to be a part of it. Right. And and then I get to open it up. <laughs> right. yes. Look at that. So I get to do a little bit of my stuff, uh, yeah. a little bit uh, of everybody's music. Uh, so I'm just honored. And right. I'm honored to be here today with my pianist, uh, one of my piano players, excellent Mr. Uh, Dexter Smith. Dexter Smith, we're going to so, hear a little bit of his yeah. uh, playing and, a little later. Um, uh, Mr. Washington, I've worked, with, worked for him many other times <laughs> yes. before, and he's just always trying to put music together yeah. and just giving back. Right, yeah. right. And uh, you, you talk about people wanting to put uh, bring Detroit back. Well, he's he's here. Yeah, he's, yeah. Here. he's here. You know, uh, uh, Harmony Park, uh, which is in the in the in part of the area where mm -hmm. Paradise Valley was. You know, you can go down there on a lot of weekends now and hear yes. music again uh, yes. in the in the little square. Yes. yes. Well, our inaugural was in Paradise Valley okay. Park. Okay. Okay. And the success was so overwhelming. Mm, yes. We had close to 35 plus thousand people Is that right? come out in that little days. square. Wow. In that little square, <laughs> but you know, I had the streets blocked off in Madison and, okay. and at Gratiot, so we had that whole area blocked off. And so, with the growth of that, that's why we're still still ex so excited about moving it to Hart Plaza, to Hart Plaza because see. it's a stone throw away from Paradise Valley, but our mission, our initiatives, and our message of celebrating this great history and the great music, and, and Dwayne gave um, a point on the variety of the music. You know, it's going to be the funk, the jazz, the uh -huh. R&B, all weekend long, so you'll have not only a collective of music, but you'll also have a collective of people. Yeah. Right. And we right. all know when the right, right energy gets together with people, <laughs> man. So just look forward. You know, next week at Heart Plaza, uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. And I just wanted to say thank uh, thanks to Councilwoman Joanne Watson, mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Kenyatta, and that yeah. body of council that really spearheaded the rebirth of Paradise Valley. Of Paradise Valley, right. Yes, I mean, we're getting back to mm -hmm. uh, that slowly, it feels like. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time mm -hmm. since anybody really even called it uh, that. But yes. you do now have this sort of awareness of this is what this is going to be, and it's a lot smaller than it than it used to be, but that's that's coming back in well, it's, a, it's, in an it's important way. You know, it, again, reminding us of our great history to celebrate yes. in, you know, and so that is one of the things that, you know, Mr. George Jackson, who was a part of the event last year, yeah. helped give birth from to the, this. From the Economic Growth Corporation. Yes, from yeah. Yeah, Detroit Economic Growth. And so, you know, through his efforts, I stand here today. Through their efforts, mm. we're able to provide wonderful, wonderful entertainment, you know, with the Daz Band, Ronnie Laws, right. Tom Brown, Christopher Williams is going to be in town, Kimmy Horn, uh, Gwen and Charles Scales, Yvette Meadows, the list goes on and on and on. So. I am just so excited to be the host, and I can't wait for uh, next weekend. Um, are, are they still? Are we still making music in that area uh, today, the way they did? Uh, well, Brian and his brother with Harmony Park Studios mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have done a great job of, of preserving some history over there with music. Uh, we're working on some things in terms of making sure uh, that the sounds of young artists and the sounds of Detroit are staying in. But we have to build. I, I really believe having a platform 
platform, yeah. which we have. We also are the producers of the Ribs and R&B Music Festival that takes place August 9th through the 11th at Hart Plaza. So with these two platforms now, artists will have a chance to express, They'll have a, our youth will have a chance to express their creativity, the Star sure. Factory with Brandon. They'll have an hour set during both events featuring our youth. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, well, and that's, that's uh, that was going to be my other question is, mm -hmm. you know, getting young people to understand yes. the history and then participate in it. Yes, yes. yes. And, and, and we have uh, so much support with yourself, with the American Black Journal, just, you know, helping us get, get the, uh, the message out on what's taking place. And, you know, so Detroit is really, you know, I get promoters and, and <laughs> concert uh, uh, folks all, all the time saying, oh, I always hear this about Detroit, but you guys are number one in booking <laughs> entertainment in, booking in the city. That's right. So how can it be a bad economy <laughs> right. when you guys are leading the nation right. in booking acts? So, yeah. you know, that just goes to show the tenacity of the uh, Detroiters, the state of Michigan. And, you know, it's our turn, and we're making some adjustments now. And these platforms with Detroit Paradise Valley, the Ribs and R&B Music Festival, just gives us another uh, reason to shine yeah. and show the country that all is well. Yeah, that, all will that be we're well. going to bring it all back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad I got you guys here. We're going to we're going to move to some other stuff. Okay, we're gonna great. Look at your film, and then we're going to hear these two perform, which is going to be really exciting. Can I just make one? Yeah, point? go ahead. On Sunday, we are very, very pleased to announce our Gospel Fest. And we're going to have Sunday service at Hart Plaza. At, for those uh, on the last day of the festival. On the right? last day of the festival. And I just want to say thank you to Pastor Burr and the family of Second New Hope Church for coming out and participating with the event this year right. and, and being a part of the event. Yeah. So, again, for those who want to uh, get their praise <laughs> That's on. That's right. You can do that, you too. You can do that, That's too. That's an important part of because our history, too. Because that was Paradise too. Yeah. Valley, yeah. right, yeah. as well. All right. Just ahead, we'll take a peek at a... A short film celebrating the rebirth of Detroit's Paradise Valley. Plus, we're going to have a very special treat in studio performances by Kimmy Horn and Dwayne Parham. That's all coming up next. Rebirth of Paradise Valley is a short film that looks at the past, present, and future of the once thriving entertainment and business district in Detroit. That area was considered one of the most prominent and dynamic African American neighborhoods in U.S. history. The original Paradise Valley covered 66 blocks and had more than 350 African American owned businesses. Here's a clip from the film. Uh, Paradise Valley was located directly across Gratiot, adjacent to Black Bottom in a much smaller geographical area. It's almost identically located where the Fort Field is now. And that was really the extent of Paradise Valley. A lot of people like to say that it went all the way down to Warren, uh, but in terms of when it, was, when it originated, when it was named, uh, that was the specific geographical area that existed at the time that it was given the name Paradise Valley. Well, there was a major street called Hastings, and Hastings, St. Antoine, Bobian were where a lot of black people lived down that corridor because those pl those places afforded apartment dwellings where you could get a room, a single room or a small apartment and they were relatively cheap. So the World War II had caused many black people to migrate to the city of Detroit because it was considered the arsenal of democracy manufacturing jobs were available and they didn't do a lot of discriminating as to who had the job. We've been talking with Johnny Washington who is the film's executive producer. That, that You were just talking about how interesting it was to go back and try to piece together all this this history, much of which is just been obliterated really yes, uh, yes. in Detroit. I mean it was uh, probably uh, some of the 
fascinating times I've had in my adult life because you know how you discover something and it makes you read the next page. Right, And then right. you read the next page. And before <laughs> I knew it, man, I think it, every family member, uh, <laughs> they know about Paradise yeah, Valley. Right, Everyone was right. researching. And the, my father and I walked through as we were filming with uh, Adwater Media. And you could hear, uh, you know, Drew McBride Sr. did the narrating. Uh, I worked closely with um, Drew McBride Jr. on filming and directing. And it was just, um, you know, the stand where the Norwood uh, Hotel was at, right across from right. Ford Field, where right. Billie Holiday performed for two weeks. Right. You right. know, the, the 606 club, um, bowling alley and the clubs and all of the fascinating things that this was a five-star area in sure. terms of, you know, folks would come in from all over the United States. Uh, to visit Paradise Valley. To see Paradise Valley. And sure. it was just a fascinating time. Yeah, and and uh, one of the ironies of, of all this is that it was created by segregation. I mean, yes. something that was designed to keep black people out actually led to a, a, a thriving community. Yes, and that, you know, when you look back and say, well, wow, when did African Americans capital do a 360, uh, right, you right. know, a couple of times in the community. <laughs> and, you know, it, 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 and it happened during this era. And unfortunately, the, for the demise when 75 came in, but let's just talk about what happened when the money was being spent with African-American businesses. Sure. It was creating uh, millionaires. It was create. we had two young men at the time bought the Gotham Hotel. Sure. Uh, you know, they had, we had our own restaurants. And like Councilwoman Joanne Watson was saying, even though it was born out of sheer necessity, right. Right. It was born, right? You, right. you know, and we have a blueprint, and so that is one of the the missions of uh, and the initiatives of Paradise Valley is to not only celebrate the great music and the great era, but educate on what this era what did was, right. and what it was. Yeah. Okay. So Kimmy Horn has moved over to one of our other studios, so she can entertain us with some of the music from the historic Paradise Valley era. So here is Miss Kimmy Horn. It's the wrong time and the wrong place Though your face is charming It's the wrong face It's not his face But it's still a lovely face That is so right with me It's the wrong song in the wrong style your smile is lovely, it's the wrong smile. It's not his smile, but it's still a lovely smile that is all right with me. You can know how happy I am that we met. I'm strangely attracted to you. There's someone I'm trying so hard to forget don't you want to forget someone too oh it's the wrong game with the wrong chips though your lips are tempting they're the wrong lips they're not his lips but still the tempting lips that if one night you are free it's all right, it's all right with me. You can know how happy I am that we met. I'm strangely attracted to you. There's someone I'm trying so hard to forget. Don't you want to forget someone too? Oh, it's the wrong game with the wrong chips. The lips are tempting, they're the wrong limb. Yeah, not his lips. The little better sustained so lips that if one night you are free. Well, it's all right. It is
Well, thank you very much, Kimmy. Boy, that was. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> That's a preview yes, of uh, you talking yes. about so that, what you're going to get next know week. Yeah. What it's going to be like, filled <laughs> with fabulous entertainment, and like I said, it's going to be that wonderful collective of different sounds from the funk with the jazz band to the jazz with Kimmy Horn, to, to Christopher Williams with the soul and R&B to Dwayne Parham. Right, right. You know, and so it's just going to go on and on <laughs> and on. There'll be over uh, 30 plus live performances all weekend long. We even have food vendors coming in from all over the country so you know you're gonna be able to get your your, your taste on yeah. your music on and just come out and have a great time right uh, when we're talking about uh, Paradise Valley mm -hmm. Hastings Street really was the spine of uh, yes of that community and that is. and that went away when they dug the the ditch for uh, I-75 I-375 yes. as it comes down they're now talking about whether they might want to fill that in uh, and reunite the neighborhood so you'd have Greektown and Paradise Valley and Ford Field connected mm -hmm. to the Eastern Market and Lafayette Park, which and, uh, is sort of a bittersweet irony, right? Isn't it? You know, and, <laughs> and you know, it was uh, quite devastating, but to see old uh, become new again and still hold on and, and you know, and so f the efforts that we're doing will hopefully align up with this new development to bring some of the Paradise Valley back to its original place. Right. Uh, uh, so what, that would be great. What are some of the things that, that uh, you mentioned before that, you know, City Council is now trying to revive the idea of Paradise Valley. What are some of the things we're seeing that, that really pushed the idea that this is going to be the, uh, a place like it was before. Well, you know, I, I just think the, the efforts of Councilwoman uh, Joanne Watson, uh, you know, um that whole student body of council sure. uh, at that time, they their mission was to make sure that the memory stayed alive. That is, and yeah. the investment that they made from what my research led me to understand is they've put over 24 plus million dollars in restoring in some restoring, of the, the yeah. buildings that were there. They've taken Harmony Park, which is now Paradise Valley Park, and redone the whole park. There's murals, yeah, a right. Billy Holiday, all the great legends, yeah. uh, Duke Ellington's when you walk through the park. So that area is alive and well. And, you know, fortunately, we had our inaugural there, so yeah. it will always be linked to this right musical there. festival. Right. And, uh, and then the growth of it, we're at Hart Plaza now. But that area on the weekend, uh, the Arts League of Michigan with Oliver and Mr. Yeah. Foster, they're keeping the arts and the music and yeah. the youth uh, learning and about. So we've got music. a lot of we've got a lot of stuff coming back. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of stuff happening, man. And uh, Detroit, it, it just takes you to walk downtown. Right, you and, just gotta and, go you, there. You right. just have to you go there. It. You see, like, wow, things are really yeah. happening. And I just wanted to really, yeah, really quick, really quick. Yes, we give there. a big shout out to my staff. Okay, I stand on the shoulders of you guys. <laughs> Thank you for your support. All right. Uh, before we wrap up, we've got another special performance in honor of Paradise Valley. Here's Detroit saxophonist Dwayne Parham and his keyboard player Dexter Smith.
Thanks a lot, Dwayne. And thanks again to Johnny Washington and to Kimmy Horn for a great history lesson and tribute to Paradise Valley. We'd love to hear what you thought about today's program and get your idea for future shows. So connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time on American Black Journal. Lindsay wants to know. So I'm curious, what's DTE Energy doing to improve their customer service? Why don't we take a ride over there and let Rachel tell us. Hello. Hello. Take a walk with me. Here at DTE Energy, we're working very hard to improve our service, like answering every call under one minute and resolving the issue on the first call. Wow. No passing the buck, huh? Nope. And plus, we're adding over 100 customer service jobs right here in the state of Michigan. I need to get a real job. I'm going to send your application. Thanks, Rachel. DTE Energy. Know your own power.